It is Bitcoin Wednesday. Bitcoin Wednesday, the digital currency revolution in the Netherlands. Register using the link on bitcoinwednesday.com. Bitcoins. 
Yeah, the, the cool thing about Bitcoin basically is uh, that a lot of criminals can use this virtual currency because it's hardly, it's unstoppable for, uh, for the government at the moment. You can make some regulation, but that will not st really stop the people uh, by using it. Um, so the benefits of Bitcoin basically are that a lot of criminals will invest in this money. And those criminals don't really care if they lose any money because they are criminals actually. Uh, so if you invest in Bitcoins, know that you are being backed by a lot of, or at least a very large group of criminals yeah, that will keep euro. investing the, in this. Uh, sorry? For the euro, I will pay just be zero and my life is money longer. So. Oh, they claim they like them. <laughs> <laughs> the hard thing is to regulate this and, and that's what will keep it growing. Um, if we look at Bitcoin right now, uh, we've seen a Liberty Reserve that was absolutely the biggest part in, in the whole cybercrime economy. Uh, Bitcoin uh, took over this place very quickly. Uh, and a lot of people actually think that there are a lot of millionaires with Bitcoin. A lot of Bitcoin, well, there are millionaires, of course, with Bitcoin, but also cyber criminals that are large millionaires uh, from Bitcoin. That is actually not really true. Uh, if you look at the biggest cyber criminals online, uh, basically uh, the biggest ones are the credit card fraudsters. Uh, they actually don't even earn that much money. If you can earn like $10,000 a month, you're a good cyber criminal. Uh, the FBI wants you to think differently. Let that be clear, and let it be clear that there are, of course, a few millionaires, but it's not that easy in the underground market to actually make a lot of money by a Bitcoin. And the whole problem basically with Bitcoin is that you can buy a Bitcoin, but once you have a Bitcoin in your hand or on your computer, you cannot do that much with it. You can buy a computer, you can buy other things, but it will stay basically in the wallet, and it's very hard to get a lot of cash actually out of the Bitcoin ecosystem. And that's where a big challenge lies with a lot of criminals nowadays. Um, uh, I think most of the people will understand that actually. Um, uh, to talk a little bit about my background, I'm actually uh, doing a lot of cybercrime forensics. And all of the cases so far we have, we have done actually with Bitcoin, we were able to solve those cases basically arrest the person uh, behind it. Uh, there are enough examples of criminals that did, did not get arrested, uh, but believe me, it just takes, takes time. Uh, a few of the biggest criminals are probably, uh, some of you probably have heard of them, they are called Rex Mundi, which is a Dutch, oh, another Dutch speaking, sorry, a Dutch speaking Belgian group. So we actually already know where to look for those guys. Uh, what they do is they tend to hack banks, online databases, and uh, they go to companies and then sell, they tell those companies, if you don't give me bitcoins, I will release the data. Uh, the funny thing is now probably all, everyone here in the audience thinks nobody will pay those bitcoins, but because we know those bitcoin addresses, we know the companies pay, actually. Uh, they made a lot of money so far, but they never actually cashed, so yeah. far. So those, those bitcoins are sitting in those accounts. Yeah, they're still waiting and in the moving. Yeah, exactly. The moment they start moving, your alarm goes off. Probably not my alarm, okay. but a lot of other people, uh, people that are alarmed. Uh, so that's one thing we've monitored so far. Uh, another thing is uh, the crypto locker for Ryan, uh, which is a typical Russian uh, sort of malware. Uh, you can buy that malware, you can send it to a lot of friends of yours. All of your data will be uh, encrypted, and if you pay them a ransom <coughs> in Bitcoin, uh, you get your files back. For those wallets, you basically see the same thing. So you see a lot of Bitcoins going to those wallets, but there's hardly any paying out, actually. And if they do pay out, because you must, of course, it's always a relatively small amount. Of course, I do want to earn like $10,000 a month, I won't get rich of it. And if that is the amount that you will have to live for the rest of your life, and you're gonna have a hard time to never make a mistake and never get arrested. Um, I had another example, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, the other example is uh, one that's very popular at the moment, uh, which is sending extortion letters to companies. So if you have, for example, uh, barsmith.nl, a huge online company, they, you get a letter, and if you don't pay the ransom uh, very quickly, they will DDoS your website and you will have to pay there. Uh, it's very popular at very young, uh, young guys at the moment, and I'm quite sure those guys will get arrested as well. Uh, it's a very funny thing to do in the beginning, but it will never, you can never keep it going, actually. Um, then the last example, uh, yeah, I forgot that one. Mm. Uh, basically, I forgot the last example. Uh, the funny thing is that uh, since Bitcoin uh, went online, uh, all of those cr cyber criminals switched to the whole Bitcoin system. Uh, if you look at the smaller hacking forums with the very youngsters from 16 year old <coughs> that are doing uh, cyber crime at the moment, they have a favor for using still using PayPal. Um, but the, the more advanced guys, or at least the guys that do want to uh, earn some of their money uh, will switch to Bitcoin. And the funny thing is that uh, once or as long as Bitcoin is being backed up with these guys, uh, it is very good to invest in Bitcoin. And that's probably a very positive way to end this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Understand uh, that anonymity is very, is very important then, yeah? If they <coughs> are to invest into Bitcoin. So uh, what about other currencies like Darkcoin? Could that not be the, the next big thing? Yeah, Bitcoin is still just the most popular one. That is. But yeah. I mean, did you look into the, let's say, security of the transactions yeah. for Darkcoin first? Yeah, there are some. Uh, uh, the funny thing is that criminals will always stick to the most popular one. So as long as Bitcoin basically stays popular, the criminals will probably keep that uh, uh, that coin as a favor. But it, they will easily uh, switch to another one, of course. If that's uh, the problem. Um, yeah, th that's basically my answer to your uh, question. More questions? Um, say I, uh, I crypto look for someone, and I use the ransom to buy a pizza uh, at Dyson Shore. Yeah. Is there a way, or is there a problem Hello. for Dysonshore or for um, the company doing the payments to push that information back to the law enforcement agencies, or is it still being worked? Because the, there should be a system for that, yeah. I think. Uh, the funny thing I should say, I'm not a law enforcement officer. Uh, actually, I got arrested once, so I'm on the other side, but I do help those guys sometimes. At Dysonshore, for takeaway, is probably one of the a few companies that is working very extremely good together with law enforcement. It's basically one of the yeah, favorable websites to arrest criminals because a lot of criminals that are underrun will eventually order a pizza somewhere and put their name somewhere on the list. That's the moment when the police will get into it. So that's quite funny that you choose types of drugs. That's what a lot of people think that while you launder, that those services are everywhere to be found online. Just launder your bitcoins, make them go everywhere, uh, but follow the money is basically still the easiest way to follow all of that money. And as long as you stay very under the radar, so you do very small amounts, you will probably be able to launder that money. But every single criminal gets really a bond. And that's a human thing. Can I? Yeah. Um, yeah. Bitcoin obviously has a quite high level of anonymity. So yeah. how high is, the, is it of a hustle in your work? I believe it is high. Yeah. Then the next question is, uh, uh, what would, uh, let's say, what compromises, what technological advance would uh, help you while uh, keeping the anonymity uh, for for users at uh, 
can I say best um, acceptable level yeah I don't think there's a, a, that big of a challenge to be honest uh, Bitcoin is very anonymous uh, but Bitcoin is basically not attached to an identity right now. Uh, as I said, all of the cases so far we have done, we were able to track the person behind it. There are a few examples right now uh, with the Rex Mooney case, for example, which is, tends to be very uh, hard to find those guys. But they, they, these are just very small examples. And if you, uh, Bitcoin is being used a lot in the underground market for drugs, selling drugs and those kind of things. But these kinds of the, these amounts are always very low, and that's the difference basically uh, uh, where you have to deal with. And whether uh, buying or selling drugs is very illegal or very bad to do, that that's a different question, I guess. But getting very rich is very hard. Okay, the last question. And you, you mentioned Liberty Reserve, but I didn't see e gold anywhere. My, my favorite back then was e gold. It was just so yeah. much fun. E gold is actually the previous one of uh, Liberty Reserve. Oh, okay. So yeah. right. Liberty Reserve. Uh, the funny thing is actually e gold, uh, they're actually the same owners as well as Liberty Reserve. But e gold as well got uh, yeah, busted or arrested. I don't know the exact story about it. <laughs> and uh, basically, within the same year, those guys started. With then they started in Costa Rica because Costa Rica doesn't have an exchange program with the United States, but somehow the FBI was able to do things. So, last question. Yeah. Last question yeah. The, the yeah. point you're making is that uh, people who want to exchange Bitcoin for something in the well, real world, you leave traces. If you yeah. buy something, then you need to leave an identity or another. So people get caught then. Yeah. And there's this myth that Bitcoin is anonymous. Yeah. So basically, it's a kind of honeypot to catch criminals and if you would publicize that so if you would yeah well if you would give a lot of publicity to that fact people might move to more anonymous coins so I'm wondering whether it's a deliberate choice by law enforcement not to publicize the fact that they actually catch people who want to cash in on their Bitcoin um, income yeah or criminal income and it's a very tough question of course to, to answer such things uh, I think the main problem with the justice system right now is that they don't have control of the people so they don't know exactly where all the money uh, to which person it's going and that's probably the biggest deal and uh, the biggest challenge for law enforcement is not arresting the person behind it. Uh, but that's my opinion I don't know the answer were these people actually crazy? Yeah. Other traces. Uh, they were traced from the moment they were cashing out the bitcoins. So they were either selling a computer or a laptop or using a uh, takeaway. Uh, those were the, the ways they got caught eventually. And the funny thing is that you have a lot of criminals with a lot of bitcoins in their wallets, but they were, are not able to do anything with it. Uh, okay, but the law enforcement has to start somewhere, and I suspect they don't start with people buying pizzas. They do. <laughs> you could either say that uh, Tyson Trump is probably more of a honeypot than the other way around. <laughs> there are a, a lot of funny examples actually of, of Tyson Trump spe specifically of people getting arrested. For example, you have the, the Ajax hooligan person that was on the run for like one year here in Amsterdam. Uh, he actually as well got arrested by buying a pizza. He was uh, uh, living at the house of his friend and he eventually ordered a pizza that had to be delivered specifically to his name. And that's how they actually uh, found him. Uh, so either that website is under 24 seven surveillance or they co are cooperating very extensively with, uh, with law enforcement. But that's just something I know. I don't know the exact Thanks for your time. Or the last question. Yeah. These are also probably the numbers that um, this is the activity, but also the fraud is also in the same uh, um, calculation or not. Because if you buy a prepaid MasterCard, it's much easier to spend or loan the money than uh, through Bitcoin or not. 
what did you say? Yeah, I think it's very hard to launder money through Bitcoin. So why why are you searching for uh, money launderers through Bitcoin? I think yeah, you might find some teenagers or something like that. But if you see 300 million market cap yeah. against 1 billion in Mastercards, if you buy prepaid Mastercards or you or you go to Switzerland and you you can buy the, the Mastercards yeah. without name on it, yeah. that's pure anonymity. Yeah, uh, that's and Bitcoin is not anonymity. Uh, yeah, no, there's not such a big difference, and people tend to think that Bitcoin yeah. is way more anonymous than any other payment system. It's just, uh, uh, it's if just if facing new challenges cyber and lower Sorry. So if you're a hacker or a cyber criminal and you're trying to get Bitcoin, then you're quite stupid. Uh, that depends. Uh, if you go to Just Visa and you transfer a, a yeah. very large amount of money, uh, all sorts of alarms will be raised and the money can be transferred back. Yeah. If you transfer money through Bitcoin, it's gone and you're never going to get it back. Yeah. Uh, and that's something criminals like. <laughs> yeah, 15 year old criminals are not, not, not yeah. real criminals. Mostly young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs>